Pixar's chief creative officer, Pete Docter, recently went on record saying that they would shift a good chunk of their focus on sequels. Not their entire focus, as original films like next year's L.E.O. or an original project that Dami Shi, the director of Turning Red, is reportedly working on, are still in their wheelhouse. Coinciding with another report from before, they would try to balance things out between original films and sequels. But just the mere idea of Pixar announcing a Toy Story 5, or debating about ideas for an Incredibles 3, or fishing around <laughs> for an idea centered around Finding Nemo, not to mention Inside Out 2 coming out next week, has the animation community a little worried that they may be pushing a little too heavily on a reliability on sequels, or at least more reliability than they've ever had before. Pixar has always been the studio to rely on to deliver fresh, original ideas that everyone can get into, and only announce sequels when they feel like they have a strong enough idea for one. While all the other studios got infected drastically by their unfortunate sequelitis and kept pushing a two in front of their biggest money makers and calling it a day. Pixar, much like the founder of their current landlord, seemed to hinge a little more heavily on the idea of taking their biggest hits and using them as inspiration for future endeavors rather than just making a sequel to their biggest hits. The idea of Pixar relying on sequels to personal stories rather than personal stories on their own is understandably jarring. What's even weirder though is that unlike Marvel or Lucasfilm, both of whom have basically damaged the reputation of their brands and do need to win their fans back over, Pixar doesn't really have that problem. Yeah, Lightyear was pretty disastrous, but Turning Red, as much as I myself didn't like the film, launched a pretty significant spark of popularity upon its digital release. One that showed in an impressive box office given its limited release, and Elemental, once word of mouth got out that it was up to par with Pixar's legacy, ended up garnering a pretty significant lump sum over its extended summer release. What makes anybody think that Pixar needs to play things safe for this time? Well, if I had to take a guess, it would be that Pixar, despite their efforts, isn't living up to Bob Iger's expectations for them. When he bought Pixar back in 2006, they were on a hot streak, making millions upon millions without the need to prove their IP or play anything safe. Their logo was practically the stamp of quality anybody needed, and so their films just kept making banger on top of banger at the box office with no foreseeable breaks. One, I think having two bombs in theaters and their worst domestic opening ever, despite legs later, probably threw Iger for a loop. But also, there's the place for this sequel mandate that infected every department of their film division came from. The pandemic. The thing that caused all sorts of reintegration of digital distribution, where a studio could release a film 45 days after its release if they wanted to, which reconditioned audiences to be more selective about when to go to the theater. This was especially detrimental for Disney, as they had a streaming service of their own to work with, so anybody who saw a Disney or Pixar film advertised could be like, oh, well, it'll come out on Disney Plus soon, so I'll wait for it then. Now, Disney has gotten better as of late about keeping us guessing as to when those movies will actually be on the service, but despite that, people are still more than willing to wait. It'll happen eventually, no need to rush to the theater. Audiences nowadays, more than ever, need to be more enticed to leave their homes and see these movies in theaters. And as of now, the simplest way that Iger or anyone else seems to know as far as how to entice them is by making sequels. Most likely because it's the simplest way to say, we know what you like, and we're giving you more of it to see on the big screen. And as easily as that sort of tactic can drain both a franchise and a studio, sometimes even an entire genre, the tactic in this case is no doubt paying off, as Inside Out 2 is projected to have the biggest domestic opening of any film in 2024, and the Moana 2 trailer broke new records for Disney as far as their viewership goes, and will most likely be a huge success as well. They wanted money, they got the money. Good for them. Hopefully we'll get good movies out of them. Now, the success of the sequel tactic doesn't in any way, shape, or form overpower the importance of originality in filmmaking. Far from it. Especially in animation, and especially in Pixar animation. But one, as I said earlier, they're not anywhere near veering away from that. And two, what most people don't seem to be taking into account is how wise they're being with the sequels they're choosing. I mean, Wally was a hit, why don't they announce a sequel to that? Up was a hit, why don't they make a sequel to that? A full-length one. Because even in their brainstorming stage, they're fully aware that these films don't have stories that call for continuation, and would not hold over as stories if they were forced to continue. On the other hand, Toy Story seems to be breaking new grounds as far as what stories they could tell with the franchise, finding just the right dominoes to knock over for the next film. Finding Nemo literally has an ocean of possibilities for stories to explore and isn't out for the count either. And seriously? You don't want to see an Incredibles 3? I would love to see an Incredibles 3, 4, 5, 7, 10. Just get Brad Bird on board and I'm down. And the fact that these are the only franchises that Pixar has hinted as far as potential sequels? Yeah, their wise tactics to only make sequels that deserve to be made has not hindered in the slightest. So despite Iger's obviously cheap tactic to make bukus, I'm actually looking forward to what Pixar has to offer. I can't promise myself that I'll personally like what they send out. I mean, hell, that's been a problem with their original releases. But I can at least know that whatever they choose to make goes through the filter that they know will deliver what is to them good quality animation. Pixar knows better than to just send out some formulaic garbage and put a number two in front of it. I mean, hell, save that for the competitors. They know that any follow-up they do has a base film that has a reputation that 
any sequel will have to live up to. And it comes down to filtering out the crap, as much as they can, I guess, in order to deliver the quality goods. Was their streak of success alongside originality much more inspiring and refreshing? Absolutely. But as I talked about last week, quality alone doesn't seem to cut it for modern audiences anymore if they don't think that the films they're going to see were made with them in mind. Sequels seem to be the easiest way to reassure audiences that the studios have them in mind when selecting their projects, but at the same time, Pixar knows better than anyone not to overdo it in this department and associate what will audiences want to see a follow-up to with what story can we tell the next chapter of without tainting the chapter or chapters that came before it. Which is both wise and admirable as it lets audiences know that they also have the interest of good storytelling in mind as much as anything else. And that's how we in the animation community continue to know that we got a friend in Pixar. Thank you.